The first doctor to arrive in the Western Reserve was Dr. Charles Dutton. Like other early settlers, the first doctors in this area came from New England and Pennsylvania. Dr. Dutton came from Wallington, Connecticut in 1801. As an educated man, Dutton was also a leader in the community. He served as postmaster for Youngstown, as the director of the First Bank, and also had several posts in the township government. Professional doctors were rare in the new towns, so doctors took care of people from a large geographical area. Frontier doctors had no physical offices, but traveled to patients' homes to examine and treat them. This is a small leather kit that Dr. Dutton used to carry some of his medical tools. These local doctors were general practitioners who had to know about all branches of medicine, everything from setting broken bones to birthing babies to treating illnesses such as the flu and pneumonia. Dr. John B. Harmon was the first physician in Warren. Around 1830, he bought this new instrument called the stethoscope. Listening to the sounds of the body was a popular medical practice in the 1800s. The doctor usually placed his ear directly on the patient, which could be impolite when examining the heart and lungs of a woman. In 1816, a French physician changed this practice by rolling up several sheets of thick paper and placing the end of the tube on the patient's chest instead of his ear. Later, he made an instrument out of wood that used the same basic shape. Stethoscopes amplify the sound of the body, making it easier for doctors to hear problems or soft sounds like the circulation of blood. The early instruments were monaural. The doctor used only one ear. Bioral models, like the stethoscopes of today, were not made until the 1850s. About 40 years after Charles Dutton came to the Western Reserve, the first doctor born in Youngstown begins to practice here. Dr. Timothy Woodbridge lived from 1810 to 1893, when Youngstown was still a small town. He was instrumental in organizing the Mahoning County Medical Society and served as its first president. By 1872, there were enough physicians in the area that they organized a professional group called the Mahoning County Medical Society. It is the oldest organization of professional men in Youngstown and Mahoning County. Members of the society met regularly to present research, discuss difficult medical cases, and share new developments. In a time when printed materials, such as magazines, were expensive, these organizations were a good way for doctors to hear news and learn about new discoveries. Helen Betts is the first woman to practice medicine in the Mahoning Valley. She was raised in Vienna, Ohio, and attended a school like this one. She worked as a physician in the Youngstown area around 1873. She was also the first female member of the Mahoning County Medical Society, although she was not treated as an equal among the other members. She left the valley a few years later to study in Europe. The first hospital in Youngstown is completed in 1883. It is called the Youngstown City Hospital and it had 18 beds. It grew to incorporate several homes and additional buildings over the next 10 years. A new hospital is built in 1902 that has 125 beds, three operating rooms, a drugstore, a sterilizing room, and a recovery room. As the population of Youngstown grew and people lived closer together, doctors were able to set up public offices. This allowed the doctor to use more equipment, since they didn't have to carry everything to a patient's house. This is an example of a doctor's office around 1890. Notice the white bowl on the top of the doctor's desk. Doctors who didn't have access to a pharmacy still made their own medicines. They used mortars and pestles like this one to grind herbs and powder medicines. They made syrups, pills, and ointments. Most medicines were laxatives or anti-inflammatory ointments. Also notice that most of the furniture in this office is wood. The Youngstown Hospital Association began its first school for nurses in 1896. Typically student nurses helped with surgeries, but they also fed patients, cleaned the hospital, and stuffed mattresses with straw. 
These are examples of the Youngstown Hospital Association school uniforms and capes from the 1940s and 50s. This is an example of a doctor's examination room around 1910. A major advancement in medicine at this time was that doctors began using aseptic methods, which means that they tried to prevent infection by maintaining sterile conditions on their hands and tools. Scientists had proved the existence of germs and their role in the spread of disease in the 1860s. It took many years for the medical profession to change their practices and for sterile materials to be developed. By the time this exam room was used, most doctors in the United States were using furniture that was metal with a white enamel coating. This type of furniture was strong enough to withstand sterilization with chemicals and steam. In 1917, during World War I, Youngstown supported a Red Cross hospital in France. Local citizens raised enough money to buy the equipment and supplies. Eighty-five doctors and sixty-four nurses volunteered to work at the hospital. These are examples of the uniforms worn by the doctors and nurses there. This wooden x-ray machine was made in Germany in 1929. Notice how big it is. X-rays were discovered by a German scientist about 35 years before this machine was made. Doctors soon began using this technology to diagnose and treat patients. Dr. Erhard Weltmann, who studied and practiced medicine in Berlin, brought this machine to Youngstown when he moved here in 1939. Did you know that Youngstown was the first city to organize a mass immunization drive using the Sabin vaccine for polio? Previously, most cities used the Salk vaccine. The new Sabin vaccine protected against more types of polio and provided lifelong immunity without booster shots. It was also easier to give because it could be mixed with water or put on a sugar cube. The 1961 immunization drive consisted of 18 stations throughout the county.